Um, so normally bases do not take protons from carbons, but they do take protons from the alpha carbon next to a carbonyl, and that's going to be crucial next week. Um, and this is now stabilized um, by a resonance here. And this, uh, you were right that this looks similar to an enol. Yeah. Enols have no charge. This is called an enolate because it has a charge. And that's going to be a crucial type of molecule um, in, in next week, how to form these enolates. By the way, what you were thinking of doing was going You were thinking of just doing this. Yeah. That is, you were going to take the proton and immediately push the negative charge up here. Um, that would be perfectly fine. But it's the same thing as that one, and that one's probably preferred because... It is preferred, although it, you wouldn't be able to figure out why at this point. Well, it depends. So anyway, the key thing is this is, again, a case where these... It doesn't matter which way you draw it because they're only differing by resonance anyway. It doesn't matter whether you push these negative charges up to the oxygen, because that's just resonance anyway. OK, it does turn out that uh, for a beginning student, it's best just to draw this resonance structure. And the reason is, well, 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 well now we'll get to that right now. Um, what's the point of making an enolate? What would this resonance structure now like to do? How could this now react? It is a nucleophilic carbon. Yeah, that's the key. We're always really excited when we can find ways of getting nucleophilic carbons because we usually have electrophilic carbons. It's much harder to get a nucleophilic carbon. Last term, the only ways we had to get nucleophilic carbons were basically organometallics. Here's a way to do it without an organometallic. So this is going to be a crucial reaction, a new type of carbon nucleophile. Um, now, the reason why this resonance form is better is because this resonance form makes it look like the oxygen is going to be the nucleophile. But this term, you're never going to see the oxygen acting like a nucleophile in an enolate. You're only going to see the carbon acting like a nucleophile. Now, this is a case where, unfortunately, the instructors tend to draw it in a way that's not too helpful. Instructors actually prefer this resonance structure because the negative charge prefers to be on the electronegative atom. However, it's easier to predict the reaction if you draw it this way. Um, and they'll give you full credit either way. So, unfortunately, the way instructors draw it is not the easiest way for a beginning student to think about it. So this is something very interesting about aldehydes and ketones. What did you learn this week about aldehydes and ketones? This week we learned about how aldehydes and ketones can act like electrophiles, right? That's what we were just going over, how they can be attacked by nucleophiles. So we've learned how aldehydes and ketones, we've learned how the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic. We've learned that the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic. Next week, you're going to learn that the alpha carbon can be nucleophilic. That's going to be the theme for next week. This week we saw that carbonyl carbons um, are electrophilic, and next week we're going to see that alpha carbons are, can be made nucleophilic if you treat them with a base. As we've already seen, bases make things into better nucleophiles. And the reason that you can put the negative charge here in the first place is the resonance stabilization. Okay, so that was a real good exercise uh, to go through. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.